Alicia Hatcher, a co-founder of Code Fever and Black Tech Week. You know, I was one of the first kids within my like group of friends to get a computer, and my parents were literally like, we don't really know what to do with this, here, kind of figure it out. And it was that permission to break it and put it back together. That was my first kind of leap into technology. Uh, there's a lot of things that are very liberating about coding. It helped me win a full ride scholarship to, to Lynn University. Everything that I learned on the analytical and logistical thinking that just kind of comes with learning that language is what I love. You know, when we're working with young people and, and adults and seeing it click for them, of like, hey, I can be a problem solver, like I can use my hands and, and, and solve problems and put things together and, and have an impact on in the world through technology. So there are a lot of uh, inspirations for developing Black Tech Week. One of the major things was once you get the training, there's still all these other pieces that need to come together in order to have either a successful career in STEM or be able to successfully launch a, a startup. The African American and Caribbean community is not for lack of ideas as to why they're not highly represented in the tech space. It's for lack of access to funding, the right kind of funding, and then a resource magnetism is lacking in that community. And so if we can bring all the pieces together, whether it's venture capitalists, mentors, advanced education, and just the, the sheer access of saying, hey, you know what, I'm at this event and I'm literally sitting right beside Michael Siebel. You know, we've had so many stories of people uh, as educators leaving their jobs as educators and going into coding boot camp. But then on the other side of that is startup founders who've been able to raise money because they've been able to connect with VCs on a different kind of level of just not having that connection to someone that can make that introduction to them. And the conversation has kind of been, you know, I'm looking for the best person and why does it have to be mutually exclusive from the best person and someone of color or someone from a diverse background or someone from the LGBT community or a woman? Like why does that, why do those two things have to be separate? Because they can definitely be together if we are truly intentional about finding this talent and fostering this talent. I think a lot of startups are starting to get it. And we, you know, we have them come to us through our pipeline with Black Tech Week saying, hey, we're getting ready to release a product and we want to make sure that it's more um, culturally tested um, by the population that we know is kind of making a shift in the next 10 to 10 to 15 to 20 years here in the United States. Diverse groups dictate culture, right? They make things popular. They make things pop, right? And if you can be on the beginning end of that and kind of support that and cultivate that, but also have that in-house, you could be leading in different industries. The biggest thing that we're trying to do is making sure that people understand that and then making sure that they understand the value that diverse groups actually bring into innovation. You know, you cannot let anyone stand in, in your way and you are allowed to take up as much space in the world as you need to and to accomplish your dreams. Stay true to who you are and it may take you much longer to get to where you wanna go or accomplish the things that you wanna do or change your lives, but um, you have to be authentic. Everything that you're doing will be more of intention with who you are and what you're trying to align yourself with. So that's how you stay true, man. It's, it's the slow ride, it's the slow kind of hustle, but it's the more authentic hustle and just being really honest with what you want.